Gunsmoke, transcribed earlier today from CBS. and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with the U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. The transcribed story of the violence that moves west with young America. The story of a man who moves with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. ahead there, Mr. Dillon. Somebody's gone and left his wagon right out on the prairie. Now there's a man down in front of it, Chester. It sure looks like his team went off and left him. Now, what would he be doing out here with a busted wagon and no team? And I expect he'll be glad to tell us. Come on. Get out. Mike Blocker. Yeah. Hello, Mike. Hello there. Well, it's the poor fix for a man to be in the day before his wedding. <laughs> sure is. Well, it'll keep me sober, Marshal, and my children will appreciate that even if I don't make Dodge tonight. <laughs> what happened, Mike? Where's your team? Oh, Chester, we hit a hole back there and the whiffle tree busted and that team... <laughs> It just run off like they was glad to get shed of the whole dang thing. That must have been quite a hole you had to do this. No, not much. <laughs> Look at here, Marshal. Uh, the bar's been sawed, happened too. Sure. It's them boys again. What boys? Them two crazy cowboys I hired on last fall. Uh, Plumber and Webb, you mean? Yeah. yeah. They've been funning me a lot lately. You mean this is just a joke? <laughs> it's what they figured, I guess. Well, it ain't much of a joke to leave a man stranded on the prairie this way, especially when he's trying to get to town to be married. <laughs> now, this ain't so bad. Just yesterday, they cut the stinks on my saddle. <laughs> the thing the bronc got loose and bucked it off before I could get mounted. I wish I were as even-tempered as you are, Mike. Well, uh, Marshal, it, uh, it don't pay to get mad. no. But it seems to me Plummer and Webb are going a little far with their jokes. <laughs> don't they want you to get married? I don't know. I never asked you. Now, where are they now? Oh, they rode into Dodge this morning. Oh. They see me at the wedding. I had to bring the wagon so they could carry Matilda back to the ranch. Well, we'll find your team for you. Maybe we can rig up a whiffle tree of some sort. You can buy a new one and Dodge. Oh, I'd be beholden to you, Mark. Ah, you'll get to town in time for a drink yet. We'll ride along with you to see what you do, Mike. <laughs> Matilda told me. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about you and Matilda. She's the only 
only lady in this town who is my friend. You better. Oh, thanks, man. Ah, you going to the wedding, Kitty? He insists that I do. Uh, you're pretty close friends, aren't you? Pretty close, man. I guess his partner so she can talk to me about things she wouldn't even dare mention to her nice friend. Now, they're no better than you are, Kitty. Maybe not. But there are more of them in the long run. That makes a difference. Why do you want to know about Matilda and me? Well, I've been wondering if there's any reason why either of those cowboys who work for Mike Blocker wouldn't want that wedding to come off tomorrow. Plumber and Webb? Yeah, yeah, that's right. You must have some reason for wondering about it, man. Well, man's friends always treat him a little rough before he gets married, but these boys have carried it pretty far. There's jealousy, Matt. No. Which one? Karma. He and Matilda used to see each other once in a while. Till she met Mike and fell in love with him. Yeah. As a... Uh... Plumber threatened her, or Mike. He's afraid of Mike in spite of his gentle temper. Yeah, he should be. But he told Matilda he'd make as much trouble as he could. What kind of trouble? Anything that'll embarrass her, I guess. Like a chivalry, but real unfriendly. Now they started their chivalry a little early. They even tried to get Mike crippled up a couple of days ago. Oh, I didn't know about that. Well, nothing came of it, but... I sure don't like to see anybody's wedding day spoiled. I think I'll look those two up and have a talk with them. I swear I've been in every saloon in Dodge, Mr. Dillon. Maybe they ain't in town after all. Well, we'll try the hotel, sir. Why don't you just throw him in jail till the wedding's over? I'd like to. Now, wait a minute. There they are. Yes. Yeah. It's him, all right. I saw Mike over at the Longhorn taking on a few. Well, even marrying a good woman makes a man nervous. Oh, it sure does. Well, I just the thought of it, and I want to go live with the Comanche. <laughs> well, you can't let other men do all the marrying. Why not? I don't know, it's just it is what they say. Hello, Plumber. Uh, what? Hello, Marshal. What's on your mind, Marshal? I've seen you come all the way across the plaza. I wanted to talk to you about uh, the wedding tomorrow. Oh? You ought to be talking to Mike Blocker. He's the one that's getting married. <laughs> We ain't, are we, Webb? No, we ain't. Did you think we were? Coming? All right, that's enough. You're not dealing with Mike Blocker now. You're dealing with me, and my temper's a whole lot quicker than his. No offense, Marshal. Webb didn't mean nothing. No, I didn't mean nothing. We're just some kind of good spirits. <laughs> On account of the wedding and all. For well, sure, you know how it is, Marshal. You call it good spirits to try to get a man hurt two days before his wedding? How? Cutting the cinch on his saddle. Oh. I told you. He did. He didn't seem to mind as much as you do, Mike. Don't be fooled by that. If Mike ever does get mad, there's going to be trouble. But I'm telling you to leave him alone. Oh, we ain't going to do nothing. Maybe a little chivalry out the wedding, that's all. I don't want either one of you anywhere near that wedding. Oh, now, Marshal, we was invited. The invitation's off. You understand me? Oh, the Marshal... Shut up, Webb. He's the law... We won't go near the wedding if he says so. I say we won't go nowhere as near it. That satisfy you, Marshal? Yeah, we'll be here. 
I couldn't get Chester away from that free liquor anyway. <laughs> this liquor may be free, but it ain't too stout. <laughs> I'm on my third glass, and I don't feel a thing. <laughs> you don't have enough blood in you to move it around, Chester. <laughs> That's your trouble. Well, I'd have plenty of blood if it wasn't for old quacks like you bleed me every time I get cold. I never bled a man in my life, and you know it. Well, maybe you didn't, but I sure have been bled by other doctors. Don't bleed. Blame me if you're fool enough to let him do it. Hmm. See, you know, man, I've always said if people would just stand up for their doctors once in a while rather than improve the whole medical profession. <laughs> well, you may be right, Doc. Of course I might. I'm going to go see if that jug is empty yet. Yeah, I think Mike's drunk half of it himself. Uh, take a look around outside while you're at it, huh, Justin? <laughs> for plumber and web? Oh, they haven't showed up yet, but they uh, might be waiting. Uh, All right, sir, I'll do it. <laughs> Oh, it's a nice wedding, wasn't it, Matt? Yeah, fine, fine. I brought some ammonia along in case Mike got too weak to go through it. <laughs> his entrance was a little shaky, but he got his color back about the halfway mark. Matt. Huh? Well, what's the matter, Kitty? Matt, it's terrible, that poor girl. Well, what's happened? It's her clothes, all her new clothes. Matt, we went to a room to get a pass, and everything's been torn to shreds. What? It's a mess. And Matilda's up there crying her heart out. A plumber, I suppose. Of course we get it. Who else would? Poor girl. Uh, you better go back to her, Kitty. And uh, don't tell anybody about it yet. All right, Matt. Hey, well, what are you going to do, man? Find Plummer and Webb and lock them up. Mike's pretty drunk, and I got an idea he won't take this joke as easy as he did the other. Yeah. Do you see who killed him? 
He pulled a knife on Mike. He was going to use it, too. Somebody killed him, huh? Was it Mike? I got hit about that, Marshal. I didn't see no more. All right, Joe. You do something about Webb there, huh? Look what they did in my place. It's ruined. Who's going to pay for all this? I don't know, Joe, but I'll try to find out. I didn't find out not that night, anyway. We looked around the oasis inside and out, and then I sent Chester down to wait for Mike and case he showed up at Matilda's place. So I scouted the town again. But shortly after daybreak, we both gave up and met back at the office. Miss Kitty was down there, Mr. Dillon. She stayed with Matilda all night. Oh, good. How's Matilda taking it? Well, I don't think she cares about her clothes anymore. She's too worried about Mike. Yeah. You uh, didn't tell her about Webb being killed, did you? Oh, my goodness, no, sir. I wouldn't do that. She'll find out soon enough, poor thing. What's Mike? Yeah, Mike. in, Marshal. Where you been, Mike? Sleep? Sleep? Oh, where's the plumber? Oh, I don't know. I was so drunk and so mad, I, I don't remember much of anything. Think you knocked me on the head while I was finishing off Webb. I know I ain't seen plumber since. I've just been down to the Oasis. Joe ain't seen him neither. Well, nobody has, I know. But where were you? drunk, Marshal. I must have got as far as Kelly's stable, crawled into a stall there. At least that's where I woke up this morning. Well, I'm going to have to lock you up, Mike. Yeah, that's why I come. Marshal, that was a bad thing they'd done to Matilda. Yeah, it was. But you shouldn't have killed anybody for it. Him up, Chester. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll bring back some coffee. This way, Mike. My, I sure am sorry to have to lock up a man like you, Mike. Uh, if you didn't, Chester, I'd just go find Plummer and kill him. back directly. Then you can have some coffee. I don't want nothing. Don't move, Chester. Plumber. I'll take your gun. Well, we've been looking everywhere for you. Are you glad you found me? <laughs> I'm going to cut you, Mike. 
And you won't look very good when Matilda sees you. Matilda? <laughs> we was friends once, Mike. Real good friends. You know the kind. You and Matilda? I, I'll tell you what it was like while I'm cutting your throat. Get out of that cell now. Something like that. 